This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. The countdown is on to the start of voter registration in the country in preparation for the 2017 general election. Officials at the Parliamentary Registration Department announced this morning that they are ready. Carla Palmer tells us tonight, though, that executives have implemented new measures to prevent voter fraud. The Parliamentary Registration Department is not so busy this day, but that's all expected to change in the coming weeks as voter registration in the country begins on Monday, October 5th, 2015. Parliamentary Commissioner Mr. Sherlin Hall confirmed this date during a press conference Monday morning. Mr. Hall is reminding that only Bahamian citizens are entitled to vote and only authentic valid Bahamian documents will be accepted, inclusive of a Bahamian passport, a birth certificate, and a photo identification. If the passport has expired for more than a year, residents are being forewarned to get a new one. Challenged with fraud in the past, Hall is confident that he and his team have closed the loopholes. He noted a new approach to dealing with affidavits in this regard. Applicants who may have an affidavit as their only source of identification to prove that they were born in the Bahamas must first take that affidavit to the passport office and apply for their Bahamian passport. Advanced poll voting remains in place for the Defense Force, Police Force, Parliamentary Registration Department, and persons traveling for approved health reasons. Provisions have also reportedly been made for Bahamians to vote abroad. Assistant Parliamentary Registrar Jeffrey McPhee is asking the public's assistance to ensure a smooth registration process. Persons who have their valid passports um, go to the outstations they being the Marathon Mall, Town Center Mall, the lower floor of the post office where the revising officers will um, be set up to deal with you efficiently. Conversely, we're asking those persons who have documents other than the valid passports, for example, if you are trying to uh, ID yourself with your birth certificate, old voters cards, um, or driver's license and the like. We're asking you to come here to headquarters where we have all of the necessary um, equipment and information to verify your identity. In the 2012 general election, some 172,128 persons reportedly voted. That number is expected to increase somewhere between 15 to 20,000 the next general election. That's come 2017. Carla Palmer, ZNS Network News. Jurors in the Donna Facilli murder trial were excused early today after Justice Stephen Isaacs adjourned the case to Tuesday at 2 p.m. Facilli is accused of killing her husband, Philip Facilli, at their old Fort Bay home earlier this year. Attorney Elliot Lockhart, QC, and Muriel DeSeal are defending her. Neil Brathwaite and Garvin Gaskin are prosecuting the case. The trial of four people accused of killing 43-year-old Kurt McCartney expected to open this coming Monday before Senior Justice Stephen Isaacs. The case was scheduled to open this week. However, it was adjourned as Justice Isaacs is still presiding over the Donna Facilli murder trial. Kurt McCartney is the brother of DNA leader Branville McCartney. He was shot and killed in the Gambier area in what appeared to be a robbery gone bad in 2013. The accused are Samaya Ingram, Lindira Curry, O'Kell, Farrington and Thorne Edwards. Also from the courts, 22-year-old Rodney Belton made his first appearance in the magistrate's court today. He's accused of killing Dwayne Omar Thurston Jr., also known as Little World, on Sunday, September 20th. Police say Thurston was standing outside his home when the driver and a gunman, a gunman, pardon me, inside a Honda Stream pulled up and opened fire on him. He was shot several times, died in hospital. In court, Belton was not called on to enter a plea. Bail was denied, and he was remanded to the Department of Corrections. He returns to court on November 16th. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it.
This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jiminita Swain. One billion tourists and one billion opportunities is the theme for World Tourism Day 2015 and was recognized by United Nations members around the world. The attention this year is on the impact of the tourism sector on economic growth, job creation and development. Tourism Minister the Honorable Obi Wilshkam said as the day was observed, the country celebrates that it has been a leader in the global tourism industry for more than 50 years. He said tourism is a people's business and the resilient and indomitable spirit of our people remains our greatest asset and the principal reason for our continued growth and development over the years. And in other business use, the 194 Slip Marina at Palm Cay in Eastern New Providence has for the first time been voted the best facility in New Providence. The ranking follows reviews by dozens of users of the website activecaptain.com. It's the boater's equivalent of TripAdvisor. Talkmaster Demario Demerit said every year when Active Captain releases its reviews and tallies annual scores, marinas wait with great anticipation. And for Palm Key being relatively new, to be among the top three in the country out of some 150 marinas and to be the best in Nassau is exciting. And in international business news, Apple is reporting today that it sold more than 13 million iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus. This during the first weekend, the new devices became available in 12 markets. Reuters is reporting that a new record was set for Apple's marquee product. While sales surpassed analysts' expectations of 12 to 13 million units, the company share still fell more than 1 percent. One analyst suggests investors remain skeptical that Apple can improve and on the demand for the previous iPhone, which propelled Apple to its most profitable quarter ever. That was your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jimmy this week. Building better communities is always the focus of the Kiwanis Clubs of the Bahamas. The Joint Installation Ball was held this past weekend under the patronage of the newest lieutenant officer. And Jimenita Swain tells us tonight that it was an evening that heralded a changeover from the old administration to a new one. The newest lieutenant governor for Kiwanis Division 22, along with local Kiwanis Club presidents, were recently sworn in and made permanent. Leading the administration for 2015-2016 will be Lieutenant Governor Alfred Poitier, who said the work of Kiwanis is not only important to the Bahamas, but to the world. They are all ready to lead their respective clubs. They've all had their required training, but even more importantly, they have prepared a plan, their roadmap. They know exactly where they want to take their club over the next 12 months. Kiwanians of the Year received awards. The presidents were pinned by the lieutenant governor, and the new leaders reaffirmed their commitment to the organization. So let us remain steadfast and do all that is humanly possible to make the world a better place by being important in the life of each child. I joined the Kiwanis Club and saw a movement of strength, a movement of progress and of action, a movement destined to help our community grow in many ways. We also pledge to support our Lieutenant Governor, Alfred Poitier, by building better communities and improving lives one child at a time. The Lieutenant Governor gave an idea of what he hopes to accomplish. Penetrate the inner cities in terms of providing service to individuals who are in need. We want to increase the membership of Kiwanis, but we also uh, want to ensure that when we bring in new members, they are members of substance who are willing and eager to try and make a difference in our various communities. Lieutenant Governor Poitier also reminded anyone interested in joining Kiwanis that it is an organization determined to give back. Jiminita Swain, Sedanus Network News. A royal welcome for a princess. Princess Anne received a warm welcome as she arrived in the capital yesterday. Government officials were on hand at Lyndon Penley International Airport to greet her as she touched down in the capital. The princess is president of the Caribbean-Canada Emerging Leaders Dialogue and the Bahamas was the first stop on her pop-in tour of the dialogue taking place all over Canada and the Caribbean. Now following the royal welcome, she was taken by motorcade and then later she arrived at Government House for a royal reception.
Princess Anne was greeted by the country's head of state, Governor General Her Excellency Dame Marguerite Pinlin, and Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie. During the reception at Mount Fitzwilliam, the princess mingled with guests and chatted with a number of them. Princess Anne left the capital today. Now, during her visit, 13 participants of the Governor General's Youth Award program received the highest honor of the program on Monday morning, and royalty was on hand for the occasion. Her Royal Highness Princess Anne, President of, like we said, the Caribbean Canada Emerging Leaders Dialogue, aimed at training youth for leadership, presented the group with their gold award. Also on hand for the occasion was Her Excellency Governor General Dame Marguerite Pinling, former Governor General Sir Orville Turnquest, and Minister of Youth and Sports and Culture, the Honorable Dr. Danny Johnson. He reaffirmed his ministry's commitment to the program that has developed youth leaders throughout the country. This program continues to be an inspiration to young people all around this country. Other people are watching you. They're really proud of you. And it has shown its success in the most tangible way. There are over 10,000, 10,000 young Bahamians throughout the length and breadth of this country from Abaco to Inab that have passed through this program. And we're yet to see one of them that's in crisis. Already. His, the, the, pardon me, the sports minister and culture minister says the recipients are in the pursuit of gold awards would have learned also the importance of teamwork. We're engaging in what I expect will undoubtedly become one of our most meaningful expressions of youth recognition. Considering all the efforts and resources that the GGYA and its, all of its patrons have put into this program, I also wish today to salute the facilitators and volunteers that really make this thing happen. The average Bahamian doesn't make it down to the southern Bahamas, but that doesn't stop the connection of residents there with the capital. As Keishla Adderley tells us in tonight's BTC Island Connection, their link to New Providence and beyond is a sure thing with BTC. Ferguson has lived on Crooked Island all her life. Yeah, well, I have, I have some gifts here with me. Yeah. Surprised when I see my contract. Yeah. I ain't seen him for a long time. She looks forward to calls from family and friends in the capital and elsewhere, especially considering it hasn't always been that easy. Here from your family, Nassau, to Telegram. Mm -hmm. The Telegram in Long Key. We had a station there, and they bring your telegram to you, mm -hmm. and they feel it for you. <laughs> Long Key may be a sparsely populated island now, but it was once a place of prominence in the south. The architectural ruins here speak of the rich history of the former Fortune Island, like this 17th century St. David's Anglican Church. And as BTC senior technician for Crooked Island, Acklands, and Long Key, Francis Sims explains, the Southern Bahamas is an important link between the islands of the Bahamas and the region. Well, Crooked Island, especially Curly Hill that is located, we have a fiber network, two fiber networks really. One is Columbus Network and one is our BDSNI. And this place plays an important role in the communication in the whole Bahamas and plus the South America where it connect uh, through the fiber link. We have a fiber link that connect is a, is a link connect through the whole Bahamas and Crooked Island connect into Cat Island via the BDSNI plus that plus the Columbus Network connect, connect into Cat Island then into Providence Island then into uh, Porta Plata Dominican Republic. Ferguson has no plans to leave her island. The telegraph era she left behind, eclipsed by the cell phone connection that's taken its place. Kishla Adderley for the BTC Island Connection.